Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Madison. I am a first year, second grade teacher. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about 10 things that I wish I knew about teaching before I got into it. So before I start this video, I just want to preface by saying I love my job, I love teaching, I know that there are many downsides to teaching, but let's be real, there are downsides to every job out there, every career you go into, there's going to be a downside. So I want you guys to know I love teaching and I can't imagine myself doing anything else. I love what I do every day, but um, I definitely do want to talk about things that I wish that I knew before going into teaching, that way any of you who are out there thinking about going into education can and kind of just have these in the back of your mind before you go into it so maybe you'll be a little bit more prepared. But let's just go ahead and get into the video. So I'm just going to talk about the elephant in the room. The first thing that I wish I knew about teaching was the amount of money I would be making monthly and how to budget my money. So I feel like the whole world knows that teachers are highly, highly underpaid and it is not fair for all the work that we do. And I don't think a lot of people in the world understand the amount of work that we put into our jobs and people think that we are just glorified babysitters, which is not true at all. I think if anybody took a step in our shoes for the day, they would see very quickly that we deserve to be paid more. But there's no changing that, so you know it is what it is, and you know it's not a job you go into for the money. So if you're thinking about going into teaching because you want to make bank, you're in the wrong profession. That is something I wish I knew a little bit more about. So you know when you get into the real world, you realize that your salary, you're actually not making that full amount because of taxes and money that gets put into retirement. And you know if you're not working government job, then you have your 401k and things like that. So that is something that I definitely wish I had known more about. I do live in Missouri, so in Missouri we get paid lower than other states. But then again, the cost of living in Missouri is way lower, so it's way more affordable to live here. So obviously we're not going to get paid higher like other states. Um, but I will say it is kind of hard to live on a teacher's salary when it comes to how much money you get taken out every month. But I get taken out thousands and thousands of dollars a year for taxes and money put into retirement. And so we truly do not get paid enough. However, I have learned that there are many things that you can do to help when it comes to living on a teacher's budget. So I do have a video all about how to survive on a teacher's budget and I will link that video down below. So that is the first thing that I wish I knew about teaching. I wish I knew that I would actually be making less than I initially thought. I had an idea in my head of how much I would be making, but it's actually much, much less. So live below your means. If you have an idea of how much you're gonna be making, it's probably lower than that. And so just have an idea in your head of how you can start saving money and how you can prepare for that. And that, you know, save your money, learn how to budget. That is something I did not know how to do in college. I was awful with my money. So I have I've learned how to budget my money, I've learned how to save my money, and that has helped me a lot. And all of those tips, tricks, and advice, and all of that stuff all about budgeting and how to live on a teacher's salary will be in that video linked down below. So definitely check that out if that is something that you're worried about. The second thing that I wish I knew more about and was more prepared for was how mentally exhausting and draining of a job it can be some days. The reason I say that it is so mentally and draining is because it is a job where you have to be on all day. So there are a lot of jobs out there where you sit at a desk or you're in a cubicle or maybe you just work by yourself and you can kind of check out or you know you can have moments to yourself and you can you know rest your head or close your eyes and just kind of have moments to breathe. With teaching, you don't get a lot of those. <laughs> you are in front of 20 plus kids every single day that are demanding your constant attention. You have to be 100% on, and what I mean by that is you cannot be down, you cannot be in a bad mood. No matter what's going on in your life, you have to be on, you have to be your best self, and you have to be you know, high energy, and that can be very mentally draining after a long eight plus hour day. 
So I am the type of person where I need my alone time and I need space to kind of recharge and I need my rest. And as a teacher, you just don't get a lot of that. You have very little alone time during the day, if any. You have maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes to eat lunch by yourself. And even then, usually there's other things going on and there's people around. And so it's just a very um, exhausting day in the life of a teacher. So that's just something to keep in mind. You know, if you're a high energy person, then you'll be fine. Um, I have definitely had to find ways that I can recharge on my own throughout the day. And I definitely take advantage of my weekends to recharge, spend it alone or with people I love that help me feel recharged and um, yeah so that's something that I wish I knew the third thing that I wish I knew more about when it comes to becoming a teacher is how to deal with behaviors so you learn a little bit about how to deal with behaviors in college and I would say I did learn a lot and in college the program I went to was amazing and I learned a lot there were classes about behavior management and classroom management and all that, but you really don't know what you're getting into until you're in it. So I know that's, you know, not a great tip because you can't prepare for it fully, but I would say definitely do a lot of research on it and study it. And there's a lot of really great books out there and I'll leave some of those linked down below of some of my favorites where you kind of can learn from the experts of how to deal with behaviors. Because the thing is, no matter what school you work at, no matter what district, no matter if you're in a high, middle or low class economy, kids are kids and there are going to be behaviors and um, you need to learn how to deal with them and how to create that classroom community to avoid having um, bad behaviors and having interruptions in your classroom and how to deal with all of that stuff. My biggest tip that I can give you guys is to get experience in different neighborhoods. Go outside your comfort zone. Go outside of your own neighborhood. Go to different neighborhoods where there is more diversity and um, different types of people, different types of socioeconomical statuses and just get out there branch out because you never know where you're going to teach and you might teach in a low class neighborhood you might teach in a high class neighborhood you don't know and so definitely get that experience with behaviors and dealing with classroom management because that is one of the biggest things I am still working on to this day the fourth thing that I wish I knew going into teaching was that your first year of teaching will probably suck and that's okay I have just now realized this as I have been teaching um, for half a year. So it wasn't my first full year, but it was a first year of teaching, if that makes sense. It was my first time in a classroom, first time with my own classroom and figuring out everything on my own. And I'm just now going into my first full year of teaching. And I think one of the biggest tips I have gotten from other educators, other experienced educators is that oh yeah, your first year, it sucks and that's okay. You're just figuring things out. And my first half year teaching, it kind of did suck. You know, there are a lot of things that you don't know how to do. You are still learning how to deal with. And you know, along with that, you're getting used to the schedule. Like I said before, you're getting used to having to be on all day. So you're emotionally exhausted, you're tired. Um, as a first year teacher, you have to spend your money on almost everything. You have to plan for everything because you don't have plans from the year before. So, you know, third, fourth, fifth year teachers and experienced teachers have plans that they can just pull from a cabinet. Whereas we have to spend late nights planning for the next day and the next week. So there are a lot of things that add <laughs> stress to your first year teaching. And the fact that you just have never done it before makes it extremely hard and that's okay. And I think that's what I've learned. I thought, you know, going my first year teaching, it was gonna be so fun. I was gonna have all these cute lesson plans. And you know, at the end of the day, it is still a job and you're still learning and um, kids are kids. You're gonna have a lot of curveballs thrown at you. You're gonna have a lot of behaviors that you have to deal with. And um, you're gonna be learning how to survive on a teacher's salary for the first time. And there's just a lot, you know, that first year that you're figuring things out. I'm sure if you are a first year teacher or if you're just now becoming a second year teacher, you can relate. And so if you have any other tips or advice, please leave that down below for other teachers that are watching this video. The fifth thing that I wish I knew before becoming a teacher was how to take care of yourself. So 
kind of going along with the fact that it is mentally exhausting um you know you have to definitely take care of yourself mentally and physically so my first half year of teaching i didn't feel like i did a great job doing that i felt like i spent most of my days at work i would spend nights there i would spend weekends working and i just didn't have a lot of time to myself and I didn't take care of myself mentally or physically so this year that is something huge that I've been working on and that's something I've been working on the past few months over summer when preparing for the new year I've made sure that it doesn't consume my entire life and that I have other hobbies and activities and ways of self-care for myself so I can make a whole video on how to um, take care of yourself as, as a teacher and the forms of self-care that I use but some that I definitely live by, I like to get outside, I like to exercise, I like to do yoga and breathe and meditate and spend time with family, spend time with friends and just take time for yourself ultimately is so important because teaching can be a very exhausting job both mentally and physically. It's really important to find ways that you can recharge and at the end of the day that will make you a better teacher and it will help you show up for your kids if you are showing up for yourself as well. So my tip number six I already touched on and that is that teaching is not for everybody. So when I went into education there were a lot of girls that were going into it the same year as me and they had their first classroom experiences and they changed their minds real quick and I think that's great honestly. I think that's really important. It's really really important to get as much experience as you can before you graduate and become a full-time teacher because the truth is teaching is not for everybody. It is a very hard job you don't get paid highly for it um, people may not even you know think highly of you for choosing this career so you have to have thick skin you have to be really mentally strong to be a teacher and um, you have to be willing to make a lot of sacrifices so the truth is is that we need teachers who are willing to you know put their full effort in and to put their heart in it and teachers that are passionate about the job and teachers who cannot imagine doing anything else. We need those teachers. We need teachers that are going to come and make a difference in these kids' lives. So there is a lot of selflessness that comes into play when becoming a teacher. So that's just something to think about that, you know, it's not a super easy breezy job. I think some people think you're going to go into it and just kind of like, oh, it's fun. I can just take care of kids and like do crafts with them or I don't know what people think, honestly, but it is not an easy job it's hard it's time demanding it's physically demanding it's emotionally demanding so definitely go into it if you have a passion for teaching and is, and that is something that you truly truly want to do seventh thing that I wish that I knew before going into teaching was that there are so many routes besides just being a general education teacher now I love being a general education teacher and right now in my life it is the only thing I want to do I want to be in the classroom and I want to be teaching um, however there are so many many other um, roads that you can take when it comes to education so whether that means that you want to get a specialist degree you can get a master's degree you can get your doctorate or your master's and you can teach other teachers and so there are so many routes and I kind of wish I knew more about this just because if I did I may have gotten a minor or I may have gotten a specialist degree or an emphasis or something along those lines just so I had more experience and more knowledge and was able to go into those my degree is just an elementary education and I don't have a minor or an emphasis or anything like that however there are other career paths that I have come across as I have been working in schools that I find really interesting and I kind of wish oh I kind of wish like I would have gotten a separate certificate or a degree in that and um, you know that's totally personal that's just something I wish I knew about I think it would be really interesting to be an ELL teacher an ESOL teacher I find those jobs really interesting and I definitely have passion for working with students who speak other language other than English and so that is something that I kind of wish that I went into but now it's almost like is it too late can I go back just things like that and so I think it's really important that if you are studying education research and talk to other experienced teachers or other administrators and education um, just about what other career paths there are just in case that you want to go into something else or maybe you already know that you're not going to want to be in the classroom for 20 plus years um, and so definitely look into that because there are so many other routes when it comes to getting a career in education the next thing that I wish that I knew before going into teaching was how to prioritize my time between school work 
home and socially with friends and family. Um, so kind of like I've said before, it's really important for me to have time to myself and how and it's important to me to take care of myself and spend time with people that I love because that type of stuff really recharges me and energizes me and it makes me a better teacher. You have to prioritize this stuff in a way that you have time for school, you have time to prep and plan and um, be ready for the next day at school, but you want to make sure that you're not spending all your time at school. So that is something that I definitely learned last year. I was spending nights at school, weekends at school, and I think that's normal for first year teachers. So, you know, going into your first year teaching, I think it's normal to expect that you will be spending a little bit more time at school than other teachers, just because, like I said before, you don't have anything prepped or planned from the year before. So you're just kind of starting from scratch. Um, and that's okay to spend that extra time. But, you know, your job and teaching is not your whole life. Um, definitely, you know, spend time on your own, away from school, with family and friends and doing things that you love. And for me, I found balance by making a schedule for myself. So I ended up deciding that Tuesdays and Thursdays would be the days that I stay after school. And I wouldn't stay super late, just maybe an hour or two. And that was when I would stay after to make copies and print and plan. And then Sundays is when I would kind of plan for the week. So it was still on the weekends, but it was mainly just like my second half of the day on Sunday that I would spend planning for the week. And that way I still had time during the week to come home and I would try to turn off my work brain when I get home and not think about school and just be present in the moment with my boyfriend and with my friends and family or just by myself. So yeah, I think that's just really important. I think it's important to know your boundaries and find that balance between work and home. The next thing that I wish I knew a little bit more about before going into teaching is that people actually kind of look down on teachers. Not everybody, but there are a lot of people out there. And so when I went into education, um, I definitely was a little nervous to tell people that I was becoming an elementary teacher because you get all sorts of different reactions from people when telling them that you're going into education. I can't tell you the number of times that someone has told me, oh, well, you don't know that they make that much money. Or, you know, they ask me, well, how much money are you gonna make? Or they just, you know, kind of give me that look of, um, you know, why would you want to go into that? And so I think that's important. You have to have thick skin when going into this career choice. Of course, there are people that are super supportive out there. And I am lucky enough that my family was so supportive, so encouraging, and they were so excited for me to go into education. And they are so proud of me for being a teacher. And um, I wish that was the same for everybody out there. But unfortunately, that is just not the case for everybody. Some people just don't have that same support system so if you want to go into teaching if it's something you are passionate about then go for it don't worry about what other people think what other people say of course like I said there's negatives to every job but if money is the only thing holding you back then I would say go for it because it is possible to survive on a teacher budget and you can do it and don't let other people's negative reactions or comments affect you when it comes to making that decision. The tenth and final thing that I wish I knew about teaching before going into my first year is to ask for help. You don't know everything and it's okay that you don't know everything and other people are there to help you, other teachers in the building, whether it's teachers or admin or anybody in the building they are all there to help you and especially your team members the ones that you work with they are there to support you and to offer that advice and if you're lucky enough to have a mentor then lean on them and you are not in this alone you know I think the te teacher community is one of the best communities out there um, since I have joined the Instagram teacher community I have received so much support and advice and love from other teachers all around the world and it's just one big giant family really and we're all in this together because we all know the struggles and we also all know the amazing parts of being a teacher and so we can bond through those things and so that is huge my first year last year I just 
I was afraid to ask questions. I was afraid to act like I didn't know. And um, I was afraid to annoy my team teachers by asking them all the questions. And you know, that's not the case. They want you to ask questions and you're not going to know everything. And they know that you don't know everything. So it's okay to admit, hey, I don't understand. What am I supposed to do here? Or I don't know, I've never heard about that. What do I do? And so that is okay. Ask questions, lean on others for support, lean on your team members, lean on your friends, your family, and just to find your support system no matter who it is and lean on them because at the end of the day, it is a tough job and you're definitely going to need people to lean on. Um, and so uh, yeah, that is my 10th and final tip for you guys. Like I said, this is a tough job, but it is by far the most rewarding job. I cannot imagine myself doing anything else. I come home from teaching with the warmest heart and um, it's really, I think, made me a better person at the end of the day. And so I'm forever grateful for teaching and I'm so happy that I chose this as my career. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to leave them down below or DM me on Instagram. I always reply to my DMs on there. Um, so I would love to chat with you guys. If you have any other um, advice or tips to add to this video, feel free to leave them down below as well. I appreciate you guys. Thank you again for all of your support on this YouTube channel. And thank you for following me along my teaching journey. And so yeah, once again, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you're not already subscribed to my channel please hit that subscribe button down below it really supports my channel and it lets me know that you guys are enjoying these videos and i will see you guys next time bye